Welcome, and today we're going to be taking another look at Starmade. So this is going to be a new player tutorial. Um, I want to reference all the block IDs which are on the Starmade site. Just going to do a quick Google search for Starmade IDs, and it'll give you the link to the official site just there. We're going to be jumping straight into the uh, uh, current pre-build, which should be relevant for the new release. So we're going to go through each of these blocks real quick. <clears throat> now. What I've got here is a little platform which we're going to be using to test. We're going to be using this view so that you can see what I'm looking at. If I go in here, you can see currently we've got no power, no thrust, a uh, horrible turning speed, <laughs> and a mass of 58. So there's 581 blocks here. Okay, right. So let's start off with the power block. The power block is the uh, most essential block that you're going to need for your ship. Install one power block and the standard 20,000 power tank reserve will be activated. One block gives 140.8 energy per second. So there it is. What you want to do is extend these in lines. As you can see, the longer it is, you'll get better power. However, if I break this line, 618, 614. <laughs> So it's a bit of a mystery, you can have a lot of fun with these, but there you are, see, if I put it here, 763, 617, 763, 924, 1096, 1096, so you can see it's actually giving more than it should. Also an interesting thing to note, without going into too much detail is there, you have 924 E per second. Take one, two, three, and then put them back on. Same amount of blocks, 551. Put another one on, 576. So if I just take those off again. So that's, bet that's twice as good. So if I put these in, it makes no difference. 714, whoops, 1024, 924, and it's expandable. It's a bit of a puzzle, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but that's an example of a reactor. I'm going to give you a couple more, but there is a bit of a, it's a holy grail in research. Same size. Probably not really fair to, to, to test, but you can see how that would work when you put it across. So that is the power block. ID number is two. You can use the command for all of these, give, ID, space, start typing your name, press tab, space, two, which is the block ID. I want 1,000, 10,000, and it'll add them to your inventory. Press I for inventory. If you need to switch your items, you can use drag and drop and switch things over the top. That's it. There are various other controls for the UI. We'll go into more detail in later tutorial. So then, moving on to the shield block. The shield block is item ID number three. We put a shield block on the ship. The entire ship will now be protected. So if I just get my pistol, shoot the ship, you can see there's now a shield on the ship. It's only got one shield though, one shield block. So then, if I look at the actual amount it's given me, the shield's 806 per block. So I put another one down, 1280. Another one, 1678. Doesn't matter how you put them down or where, don't need to be connected either. There you go. And so you can put your shields on however you want. Currently, this may be changing, and I'll revisit this tutorial if that's the case. So, you've got your shields, you've got your power, now you need thrusters to make your ship move. If you put one thruster block down, you're going to get one thrust. As we know, this is 584 
uh, blocks or 58 mass. So you're going to need enough thrust to power this. So you, I connect them all to, for a bonus, but it's only a small bonus. So if I just build this around here, you can see now we're up to 63 to 61. So we've now broken the mass ratio. So this thing will move, no problem. I'm going to continue the band. There we go. And now it has thrust. And I'm done. So then, the next thing you'll want to be adding to your ship is probably some weapon systems. You can access the weapons computer. If you ever need to know a block ID, go visit to a shop. Find the item in the inventory. So press I. Hit the shop tab. And then scroll down to the ship tab. Weapons computer. Hit by recipe. You won't have 5,000 blocks at this point. So when you say OK. Oh, looks like I already have them. It will actually tell you. Here we go. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Get rid of them. Buy recipe. There. Up here in the top. Number six. So then, item ID six. I'm going to whack one down now. When you, when you put down a weapons computer, it'll have an orange box around it. That signifies that it's currently active and selected. So if I push C, I can toggle this. And in the left hand side, you will see weapons computer deselect with C. If you're ever unsure of a block, what it is, you can just hit C and it'll tell you what it is. Which is very useful if you're looking at the side of one of these and you're not really sure what, so you push C and it'll tell you, ah, that's a thruster. So you know not to remove things you shouldn't be removing. So there you are. Select the weapons computer with C. Like I say, it's already automatically linked, but if you didn't have it linked, you'll notice a little green line as it's ready to link to the antimatter cannon. So if we now put one block down, you'll see uh, that the uh, you'd think, oh well, am I going to fire into my weapons computer? And the question, the answer is, the projectiles will go through your ship, so they can hit your turrets. So don't dock turrets in front of your cannons. However, they will not shoot your ship, so that's not a problem. You can armor around them, no problem at all. Right now, then, you might be thinking, well, what if I put down a weapons computer that I uh, didn't have it selected? and I put it down, it's going to tell me you have placed a controllable block without selecting it. So what you can do in that situation is push C on the weapons computer and you'll notice that one of them has the pink box to say it is linked, one of them doesn't. So you can push V to toggle the selection with that computer. This also works if I unselect quickly with C. If I make a bank of them and go C, you'll notice they are there. If I push Shift V, it'll select everything in the group. So I'll just deselect this one quickly. And there you have it. You can select the entire group in one. So if you forget to make an entire bank connect to a computer, you can go back and do it without having to tear the whole thing out. So there's that. Looking at the stats for just one block, you can press T, which will go into your weapons tab. Click on the weapons computer. And then what you'll see here is your damage sliders. So currently, you can change the profile of the weapon by, for example, sliding out of speed, putting into reload for a faster fire rate. So if I just demonstrate that, push T, push the weapons computer in flight mode, and press 1. So obviously, changing between build mode and flight mode, as it says on the screen, use space. So build mode, fly and clip, Spet flight mode, you can turn the ship. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use this weapons computer. It's quite a long ship. So there we go, we have quite a fast fire rate there. So if I now go back into the T menu and change this to fast speed slow reload, and as you can see, this is an open-ended system. So 
and now we have a faster, slower, slower fire rate with a faster projectile. And like I say, there's much more, much more you can do with that. <clears throat> if you push T, click on the weapons computer. Oh, sorry, the shop. Click on the AMC. It does give you some information on how exactly you can get the best performance out of these. So they benefit from being grouped together, enabling the cannons to fire further, fly faster, hit harder, and reload more efficiently. So, just for example, there's a lot of research that has gone into this, much like with the power. So it's not just as simple as slapping down a big block, but that will work against shields. So one, two, three, four, five. If we look at the controller here, we're getting 62 damage. If I go to the structure tab, I can see on the AMCs how much I've got 236 DPS. So if I now make this array larger, and then go back into the structure tab, antimatter cannon system, you can now see I'm at 501 DPS, 24 blocks. It will also give you a power usage, which I believe is per shot, not per second. So, uh, yeah. And there we go. So if I go into the uh, T menu, getting 123 now. Uh, you should aim for between 200 and 400, really, if you're going for block removal. Obviously, if someone's got a lot of shields, you want a lot more uh, damage per volley. So there you go. That is the AMC, if you're wondering. You can get into astronaut mode, walk up to the front of this and push R to select the output for your array. So if you're wondering which one does it come out of, you choose. You just have to go up to it and push R when you're in space mode. Or uh, astronaut mode, sorry. Okay. Uh, the last and probably the most important thing for you to learn, is, uh, if you're new to the game, is there is a faction module in this game. You can push I, go to faction, and create new faction. Name it, and then you will be, you will have controls here for a faction. Every faction gets one home base for free, which is invulnerable if factioned as a home base. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that really quickly before we finish this. First thing though is obviously how do I faction my ship? So you can buy the faction module from the shop, or you can create it with cubitons, which is another thing that we'll be going into later. Now. I'm going to use it here, it's uh, item ID 291, so I'm going to throw my faction module down and uh, from that point on I have to get out of the ship and I've got to do some space walking so I can get over, Ooh, here we go, do some space walking. Press R, enter faction signature, from this point you can actually rename the ship, so I'm going to call this one Touch Ship 1. To say OK. Now this ship will be listed as, as Mushroom Fleet, which is my faction. So if I try to dock this to my fleet base, it will work because the ship's in the right faction. Also, this means that if some other player that's not in my faction tries to come up and fly off, it won't let him in my core. Of course, I can let them in using a faction permission block, but I'll get to that later. So for now, faction permission, uh, sorry, faction module on your ship. Now your ship is factioned. Of course, I would imagine that you would make something a little bit prettier than this. But anyway, moving on. You push M to make a station. So I'm going to call this Awesome Station. Now then, once you have your station, you'll notice it's a single block floating in space. If you right click this, you can delete your station and then it's gone. So my Awesome Station is now gone. But if I push M, I can pay another 100,000 creds and buy another one. First thing you're going to want is a build block. The build block is item ID 1, 2, 3. Now, you can buy this from the shop, or as usual, you can create it with your friendly Cubitom system. If I hit the build block here, I can now enter R and get into build mode. There is no space for flight mode in stations, so, you know, this is a fixed entity cannot be moved, it's anchored in space, much like the shops and the NPC stations. So the first thing you're probably going to want to do is uh, get a docking module. Now a docking module, here it is, 
find now just put the docking module straight on top. Some servers use a docking area ignore rule. What that basically means is to make it easy for everybody to uh, take advantage of this sort of parking ability. What they'll do is they'll say, you need to uh, dock up your ship, for example. And um, there is an enhancer system which allows you to expand this green box by placing them in an X going down as well and then that would actually expand this green box we're going to cover docking and turrets in a different tutorial so for now I just want to cover this so we're going to put the faction module on our station there we go so now we have a build block a faction module and a docking module and of course the original block for the station interestingly you can remove this block once you have other blocks on it so you don't have to keep the original grey that was there to, to begin with you can change that later so at this point with docking area ignore in place I can dock that ship to this thing no problem so I'm gonna jump out of here I'm gonna go to the faction block push R faction signature and then make faction home if I go into here I can actually rename this to awesome station now then, unless somebody is in your faction, nobody can actually touch your ship while it's docked to this. It will be invulnerable, and any ships or turrets docked to it will also be invulnerable now. So, we're going to go through the docking process. Obviously, you wouldn't want to dock it with a beam coming out of the core. So what we're going to do is use a camera module. Like I say, all the IDs are available on the StarMade website, and there will be a link in the description of this video just for you guys to uh, follow this along. So the first thing I'm going to do is enter the ship call. I'm going to go to the front of the ship with build mode. Then I'm going to whack an SD cockpit on the front. Just so you know, you can press control, place the mouse anywhere over the screen and rotate your mouse wheel. And this will enable you to uh, put cockpits on the side and it will orient the camera when you switch through them. Which is very nice for uh, doing aft and whatever, different views, interior views, CCTV and so on. So we're going to dock this and then we're pretty much done. So I will switch to the camera by pushing the right arrow and then we'll try not to crash into my station too much. Okay, so push zero for the docking beam and then dock it up to the station. So here we are, we're going to aim for this green thing. It doesn't matter which side you hit. And there we are, we've docked it up. So this is completed. For all intents and purposes, I could lock out that log out now and uh, anyone coming along here won't be able to access it unless they're in my faction or allied with my faction um, and certainly griefers can't destroy it so if I haven't finished it there you go for all intents and purposes this is safe and I can log out of course remember always press I cat log save in local always save your ship to local so I'm going to call this touch ship one press OK and I'm also going to save it on the server, touch ship one. So there's difference between the important difference is this one creates it on the server you're currently playing on. But saving local is on your computer. So if I now click upload local, touch ship one is here. So if this server was reset for whatever reason, I've still got my ship. And because my station is what? How many blocks is my station? Because my station has only four blocks, it's not going to be a big deal rebuilding that. So, um, like I say, I hope this tutorial helped. We're going to be doing many more of these tutorials. Um, so, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.